What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three recent returns that I just got back in the mail. So let me jump right into this. And the first one is postmarked from Ohio. And it looks like he may have kept one of the cards, which is fine. From former Los Angeles Dodger Lem Matuzic on one. 87 tops makes two. And a third, 86 Donruss. And I want to say he kept like an 88 score or 88 Fleer. I don't remember. It wasn't really that important to me, so not a big deal. If um, he wants to keep one for his collection, that's perfectly fine. At least it wasn't a senior league card or something like that. I definitely would have remembered that. And he wasn't in the senior league, so we're good there. But uh, anyways, so let me tell you a little bit about Lynn Matuzic. Matuzic attended Moeller High School in Cincinnati and led his Crusader baseball team to the Ohio State Championship in 1972. It was Moeller's first state title in any team sport in school history. He also led the Greater Cincinnati League GCL in scoring during his senior year in basketball, averaging 18.4 points per game. For his efforts, Matuzic was inducted into the first Athletic Hall of Fame class in 1982, 10 years later. Matuzic was drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies in the fifth round with the 113th pick overall of the 1976 baseball draft. He worked his way up through the Phillies system and made his Phillies debut on September 3rd, 1981, where he hit a pinch hit double in his first MLB at bat against the Cincinnati Reds. From 1982, 1983, Matuzic would be primarily used as a backup player throughout his career, but most notably in 1984 when the Phillies decided to part ways with Pete Rose, Matuzic took over the first base duties for the Phillies that season. He appeared in 101 games for the Phillies that year, batting 248 and hitting 12 home runs, which 12 home runs would be the most he'd ever hit in his career. Matuzic will be returned to the Phillies in the spring of 1985, but on the first day of the season, April 1st, he was shipped to the Toronto Blue Jays from the Phillies for some minor league players. He would not play long in Toronto, and he would eventually be traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers for aging veteran Al Oliver. So that's how Al Oliver became a Blue Jay was for Lynn Matuzic. So Matuzic would return to primarily a backup role for the Dodgers until 1987 when he only appeared in 16 games for the Dodgers that season. During the 87 season, his statistics end, so I'm not sure if he played partially in the 87 season in the minors or he just hung it up or he was injured, but after 1987, uh, he was no longer in the major leagues. I'm not too sure what he did after his playing career, but he has moved back to the Ohio area. As I mentioned, he's in the Athletic Hall of Fame where he attended you know, the University of Toledo. I forgot to mention that. So he's in the Toledo Hall of Fame as well at the university. And I'm very happy to get his autograph back because I'd never gotten him before. All right, so this next one is returned from former Kansas City Royal slash Chicago Cub slash Philadelphia Philly slash New York Yankee on a senior league card as well, 404 from Doug Bird. Doug Bird's another one of those unique individuals that was actually drafted three times until he finally signed. He was drafted by the Cleveland Indians and the Seattle Pilots before he finally signed with the Kansas City Royals in 1969 out of Mount San Antonio College in Walnut, California. He grew up 
playing his high school ball in both Kentucky and California, then was drafted by the Royals. At 19, he was assigned to the Royals rookie ball affiliate and single A affiliate. He would pitch in the Royals minor league system from 1969 to 1973. In 1973, he would only appear in four games before he got the call up to the majors to pitch for the Kansas City Royals. And he sparkled in his rookie debut with an ERA of just 2.99 in 54 games coming out of the bullpen for the Royals with a 4 and 4 record. He would then be a staple of the Royals pitching staff from 1973 to 1978. He would start games here and there. He actually started 27 games in 1976, where he finished here with a 12 and 10 record with a 3.37 ERA, which would be the most wins he had in his career as a pitcher. After the '78 season, uh, he would spend one year with the Phillies. However, the Phillies would release him after the 1979 season, going into 1980, and he would only be unemployed. For a brief period of time in April of 1980, where he signed as a free agent with the Yankees. He would spend 1980 with the Yankees, where he'd go 3-0 with a 2.66 ERA. Then going into 1981, he would start the year with the Yankees. And after only 17 games, would be dealt to the Chicago Cubs. With the Cubs, he would primarily be used as a starter that year where he would go 4-5 and five in the 12 starts that he made. The following year in 1982, he would again return as a starter with the Cubs, going 9-14. and 14. After the 82 season, at 33 years old, he was then dealt to the Boston Red Sox for pitcher Chuck Rainey during the offseason. He would spend the 1983 season with the Boston Red Sox, where he would post a 1-4 record with the 6.65 ERA. After the 83 season, Mr. Bird would retire from professional baseball. However, he would resurface, as you can see, in the senior week a few years later. So I'm very happy to get Mr. Bird back, along with another one from the senior league set. So thank you, Mr. Bird. All right, this final one is from another Yankee, Roger Erickson on one, and Minnesota Twin, two, three is a twin, and a fourth for another Senior League card. So another Senior League card added to the stack. Different set, but still the Senior League. Erickson was born in Springfield, Illinois. He is the nephew of former Major League pitcher Don Erickson. He would get drafted out of the University of New Orleans by the Minnesota Twins in the third round in 1977. He would not spend a lot of time in the minor leagues, only appearing in 16 games in 1977 for the Twins before making the Twins roster in 1978 as a rookie. As a rookie, he appeared in 37 games, starting all 37, and finished the year with a 14-13 and 13 record with a 3.96 ERA. Some issues came about in 1979, and his record dipped to 3-10, and 10, and he found himself demoted to AAA for the Twins. He tried to work out the problems in 1980, but his record again was only 7-13, and 13, but his ERA was a sparkling 3.25. In 1981, he would return to the Twins. However, his record would dip to 3-8 and eight in 14 starts for the team that year. In 1982, he again would start the year with the Twins in their starting rotation. But in May of that season, he would be dealt to the New York Yankees along with Butch Weiniger for pitchers Pete Filson, Larry Milbourne, and John Pacella. He would finish out the year in 1982 with the Yankees, going 4-5, and five, starting 11 games for the team that year. In 1983, he would start the season with the Yankees, primarily in the bullpen. However, he would struggle and be demoted back down to the minor leagues, where he would be 
starting and appearing in 24 games for the Yankees AAA affiliate. After the 83 season, he would be dealt along with Steve Balboni to the Royals for a couple minor leaguers. However, he did not make the Royals roster going into 1984 and was relieved of his contract. However, he did sign in 1984 with the Detroit Tigers. After the 1984 season in AAA at 27, Erickson stepped away from the game. However, he would resurface in 1989 with the St. Louis Cardinals at 32 years old, appearing in 27 games in their AAA affiliate in 1989. Obviously, he didn't get a call up to the majors, despite having some pretty good numbers for the Cardinals that year. But at 32, I guess the Cardinals decided they didn't need him on their roster, and then he went and played in the senior league. So, very happy to get Mr. Erickson back. Um, his best season was his rookie year, which is, you know, kind of a rarity. Usually people struggle the most in their career when they're a rookie, not always. But uh, his struggles came after his rookie season. However, he did have a very good rookie campaign when he got to the majors. I'm very happy to add his autograph to my collection along with the Senior League cards. I'm also very happy to get the Doug Bird Senior League card back in the mail as well. And very happy to learn about Lynn Matuzic and how he was a two-sport athlete while in high school and college. So very neat to know that about Mr. Matuzic. He's a all-time great in college basketball and college baseball. So very happy to add these to the collection. Thanks for watching another episode. And as always, happy collecting. <music>